Bread Boy is back and today we are making some fresh focaccia. Although I'm a little disappointed because I do not have a beautiful Russian Italian wife making this for me right now. So maybe you guys should, you know, share my YouTube channel a little bit more. Maybe check out frank stefanocom so I don't have to lose my mind making bread every single week. But uh, this is a lot easier than the sourdough recipe uh, that we made about a week ago. So much less prep, much less time invested. So if that seemed like a little too much work, which it really is, definitely try this one out. Let's get started. So we have our steel bowl zeroed out on the scale, some glass bottled mineral water that I warmed up on the stove around 90 degrees. This just kickstarts the fermentation. It can take quite a bit longer if you don't warm up the water. And we want 350 grams. The focaccia is a little more forgiving with the hydration because we're not really shaping it that much. After the water, zero out the scale again, and we put 500 grams of flour. Went a little over on the water, so we go a little over on the flour, it's fine. Now it's necessary to measure out the water and the flour, but these other ingredients, you can kind of eyeball. It's not as big of a deal, but I will give the exact measurements for you guys. So here we have the sourdough starter that's available on Frankie Strange Foods. I'm going to add the whole jar. It's about 60 grams and if you do want to preserve this and make bread in a few days or another week or two, what you have to do now is mix this all together, take some of the dough back out, and then use that as the starter next time. Or you can you know, just buy another one from me, but that's a little cost prohibitive. So once you have a starter, you never have to buy one again if you uh, just keep the dough properly. Or you can you know, add this to some flour and water, make a larger starter, and keep feeding it. Now we want about 10 grams of salt, which is a few heavy pinches, seems like a lot to be honest. This is kind of optional, 20 grams of honey, which is about a tablespoon. Maybe we'll get this on Frankie's Ranch Foods, really raw honey brand. I like it because like that bee pollen and propolis on top, it tastes really, really good. Like it has a lot more flavor compared to regular honey. Then we have our A2A2 grass-fed butter from Frankie's Free Range Meat. I tried doing this with you know the liquid coconut oil. I didn't like the taste that much and olive oil can be a little inflammatory for some people. So I think butter is a pretty safe bet if you're making this and it is by far the best tasting. So we're gonna put about a tablespoon in the dough and then we're gonna use the butter to grease the pan tomorrow. I don't think I've really showed you guys any of these dairy products before. So they come vacuum sealed to prevent any spilling and then it's just in a regular tub container. Oh yeah, that smells uh, grass fed all right. <laughs> Straight from the farm boys. Yeah, I would say about a tablespoon. We don't want uh, too much fat in the dough. Okay, so we have our butter melted and then we're just gonna mix this up. Just grab our pastry cutter, scrape down the sides of the bowl, keep it clean. Now, so far up to this point, you could be making sourdough, even with this recipe, but this is where it changes. So instead of doing the auto lees and the folds, we just let this rest here for half an hour to 60 minutes. And then we're gonna form it into a ball. So very minimal prep moving forward. So our dough's been sitting for about an hour. I just rubbed my hands in the pan that had the butter just to prevent it from sticking. And we are going to form this into a ball. So what I like to do here is just fold it four times on each side, two, three, four, and then just kind of flip it over. Put those seams down and then just kind of have this in somewhat of a ball shape. Now it's a little cold in here, so we are going to use our dehydrator. I put this on kind of the medium setting, 140 degrees, and then I turn this on and the top of this machine will actually get hot. So, you know, I don't put this inside the dehydrator because it's going to be way too hot even at the lowest temperature. So what I do is I just put this on top here and even at 165, just on top of the machine is too hot. So just uh, make sure you're careful, but this is gonna sit for 10, 12 hours until it's doubled in size. So what I do is the night before I start the fermentation in the morning, we're going to put it in the pan. And then when we get home for lunch, we'll bake it off. Good morning. I slept okay for once. And our dough looks okay for once. As you guys can see, it has grown substantially in size. And I'll say it again, 
Make sure it is not too hot if you're using a dehydrator or something because you will kill the yeast and you will ruin the dough and have to do this all over again. But since we did not, we're good to go on to our next step. So we have a glass baking dish. You could really use anything, even a sheet tray if you don't have one, but this is pretty easy, it's convenient, and you can kind of tell what the cooking temperature is on the bottom while it's still in the oven. Uh, we're just gonna take some more of our A2A2 butter and spread it in the pan. I would use a solid saturated fat for this because uh, when you put the dough in here, it can kind of displace oil and then it'll stick a little easier, but it's not really that big of a deal. So now we just need to take our dough and spread it out in the pan. Now you don't wanna mess with this too much because you wanna keep as much air in it as possible. So I'm just gonna take our pastry cutter and scrape the bottom away from the inside. And this is pretty self-explanatory. You just want to evenly spread the dough in the bottom of this. So now we're gonna pop our cover on. And back to the dehydrator. This is even better because the bottom has a large surface area and it's gonna warm up evenly. So we did that first rise overnight to build up a lot of flavor, to break down the flour, ferment it, give it some air. The second rise is final. So in two hours, we should be ready to bake our focaccia. So it's been a little over two hours and it doesn't look like there's much of a second rise, which means that the first fermentation might have been at too high of a temperature or for too long of a period of time, probably both. So uh, we're gonna put the oven on 425 and then when it's preheated, we'll get this ready and pop this in. Oven is preheated at 425. I'm just gonna take a little bit of butter and rub it on my fingertips. And we are going to dimple this bread. That's the typical like, decoration for focaccia. So just put my fingers in the top vertically, and then I'll do the same thing horizontally. That's really it. Uh, should probably put a little bit of flaky sea salt on top if you have it. You could also add garlic, rosemary. Usually focaccia, they put other stuff in the dough. They don't usually just make a plain focaccia, but we'll put a, a nice sprinkle of salt on top because both the top and bottom of this are gonna get uh, nice and crispy, especially the bottom from the oven. So now we just pop this in the oven. A little bit of water for steam. Ooh, getting a facial. Anyway, so this is a lot safer and easier than the sourdough. You know, you're not using this crazy hot Dutch oven. You just pop this right in. All right, moment of truth. Looks okay crust-wise, but it did not rise that much. So focaccia is supposed to have like a crispy top and bottom layer and be very airy and light throughout if the fermentation is okay. But you see we have a you know nice crust on the bottom, a lot of golden brown. Could go a little longer, but you don't want to burn it, that's for sure. You can cut a cross section to show you guys the inside. See if you guys look on the inside, it's okay, you know, it's not like it's not that dense, but it's not as airy and light and crispy as you typically want focaccia. And it's really dependent on temperature, guys. Like the first time I made this, it turned out really good, but it was warmer outside and I didn't have to use the dehydrator. So um, it's really, really variant on the temperature. You know, it's not like we're in a commercial bakery and we have these uh, bread proofing baskets and all that stuff. So let's try a little bit. Very delicious. You don't really taste the butter. The flavor on the sourdough is a little better because it's a longer fermentation but the focaccia overall fresh out of the oven is definitely better than the sourdough. Now I've actually made this twice this video. The first time it turned out pretty dense, I have that here. And the second time still turned out dense. So again, guys, with the temperature and that type of stuff, it's sometimes difficult to get the fermentation right. But the reason I'm showing you guys this is because sourdough, the first recipe we made is good. The second, third day, maybe you have to put some water on it and heat it up in the oven, but the issue with focaccia is that you have to warm it up in the oven like every time you eat it because this, the day after, it's just not good. You know, you, you lose the crispiness from fresh out of the oven. So keep in mind, if you make this focaccia, it's delicious, but when you have it the second, third, and fourth day, you just have to pour some water on it, put it in the oven for 10 minutes just to like freshen it up. So I still have a lot of caviar in my uh, fridge from that tasting about two weeks ago and what better template than some focaccia fresh out of the oven not a bad lunch 
Not a bad lunch. Yeah, I can't complain now. I wasn't having that great of a day, but some fresh focaccia and caviar will brighten that up real quick. What I would also do with this is we did a recipe for a white bean dip some months ago. Great, great for that. So the focaccia, really, really delicious, guys. Again, just be mindful of the temperature, and you can even build up some more flavor in this uh, by leaving it in the fridge for a few hours before you uh, bake it off. But it's so, so, so much easier than the other sourdough recipe. I wanted to show this to you guys, but as always, if you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe, and check that notification bell. And if you guys do want to support me further, you can go to frank com where you will see Frankie Syringe Meat if you like some caviar and Frankie Syringe Foods if you guys like the sourdough starter. A lot of the baking materials and equipment is available on my Amazon shop, even if you don't have simple things like the stainless steel bowls. But thanks again for joining, guys, and we'll see you soon.